Picaroon. Uh, Picaroon is a tool used by people who process firewood or loggers. It's just basically a uh, little tool that has a uh, curved pick on one end, and that is for driving into the piece of firewood so you don't have to bend all the way over. You kind of put them on a little bit longer handle. You just bend down, pick it up when you're handling firewood. The other end, I'm actually going to put a little hatchet head on it. Uh, that way, if I've got a piece of firewood and needs a limb trimmed off of it, I'm going to have a small hatchet head that I can whack off little limbs and things like that from the firewood. I'm uh, actually making this today, and, and those of you maybe you haven't uh, been blacksmith in a long time and you want to try your hand and make it just a real simple hatchet, you see this all over the internet. Uh, but just get you a ball peen hammer. There's just a couple of things you need to know about if you're buying a ball peen. For one thing, you can a lot of times on eBay and places like that, you can find uh, quantities of old hammers that people are selling. Generally, if they're pretty old, they are probably a forged hammer. You don't want to do this with a cast ball peen. Uh, you definitely want to use a drop forged uh, piece of steel. This this and this is a cheap hammer. This is a Chinese made hammer. I just picked it up at uh, Ace Hardware, but it's got a decent carbon steel. So it's, it said on there that it was drop forged. So that means it has a billet that is hammered while hot. That's what you want if you're going to try to do this. Some ball peens are cast. They won't. They, they just won't work. So at least in my in, in my experience, I'll put it that way. So what I'm doing right now, we're preheating uh, the hammerhead. I already cut the handle off. I am going to re-drift the eye first thing for to receive an axe handle. So I'm heating it up right now. I'm getting ready to put a drift in it and just try to drift that out a little bit because right now it's got more just a standard hammer handle a uh, hole through it. Uh, the great thing about this, if you don't have all the uh, forging tools to punch out a big hand uh, hammerhead. Uh, you can just start with a ball peen. It's just a little bit of a cheat, but it works, especially if you're just getting started. You know, just that way you don't get too frustrated. And also, I, what I love about when you're beginning doing blacksmithing is start with projects that you can you can uh, build some confidence with. Because sometimes I, I see a lot of guys get started blacksmithing, and the first thing they want to do is make a samurai sword. <laughs> well, there's so much frustration that comes in trying to make you know, this big, nice thing right off the bat that a lot of people just quit. Start with something simple. And converting the ball peen to a little hatchet, you can do various things with the ball end. Uh, you can just make a pick out the end. Uh, you can do uh, some little detail, some little design detail in that, it's fine. I'm gonna use the flat or round hammerhead will be the part that we create the uh, hatchet out of. But I'm gonna go ahead and get it out and just go ahead and try to drift this. striking with this. My son helped me. So now we should be pretty close. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and dress this down on both sides a little. Make sure it's tight. <laughs> Alright. There it goes. Alright. That gave us a nice big eye you can see there. Uh, one of the things that we did that you have to watch out on these, this probably took us, at the temp we're at probably, I didn't start double striking with my son, but we once we started that, probably had about four or five additional heats with the double striking um, at least, but we didn't strike very long because what we didn't want to do, we didn't want to develop cracks in this. so. You make sure it's really hot when you're trying to stretch out something that's already punched because you can develop stress cracks in there. So you got to keep it hot. As soon as you start losing color, as soon as you start losing red, you start seeing dark, you stop at that point. Let's see. 
I'm, what I'm doing now is I use the power hammer uh, kind of on a, I've got a little small part here that is made for fullering, a little part right there, which it gives me the ability to really widen the metal this way. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I got to do a couple of things on the anvil, then I'll come back and use the wider part of the, of the hammer die and start drawing the blade um, lengthwise instead of widthwise. We'll try to draw it out some. I don't really want a big, I don't want a big massive head on this. I want just a sturdy chopper for just taking off little small limbs. That's all this is. It's, I don't need a big Viking battle axe here. Uh, just looking for something small. And as a matter of fact, if it gets too big, I may have to just cut it back. Because uh, I've got more material here than I need. So now, I'm gonna, I want to just kind of get it squared up. I don't want it to really have an arched blade like it is right now. And we can grind some of that off. Uh, but I just want to square this up a little. I'm probably just going to end up having to grind that end a little bit. because I've got a lot of curve there and I'm just not going to be able to quickly hand hammer that out. But what I'm, because I just want this to really to be a flat axe. I don't need it to have that right there. So I'm going to heat it back up. Then what I'm going to do is draw it. We're going to take this and draw it long ways that way. One thing I tell students, um, you know, I am not a traditionalist. I love traditional joinery. I like traditional blacksmithing. My first 10 years in business, I ran nothing but coal. Um, I did so much hand work. But I do this full time for the public. And one of the things that always comes into consideration is cost when looking at a project. So uh, if you've got time to do things traditionally, that's what you really love to do. And maybe, maybe you're not making a living, but you're selling a few things on the side. Yeah, that's great. And I think everybody's going to call themselves a blacksmith and needs to learn those hand-done traits, riveting, tenoning, you know, all that kind of stuff. You need to develop those. That will make you a better blacksmith as you move into maybe doing stuff that's like I do where I blend hand-forged work with fabrication because I develop an eye because I want things to look really good for my, for my clients. So in this, this is just a tool for me. Um, I, I can't afford to spend eight hours developing this tool that I could go buy for $50, $60 or $100. Uh, this is just something I wanted to build myself. So I'll take a few shortcuts, chopping some things off. Don't beat yourself up about that stuff. Uh, if you want to just really work it out all manually and not take any shortcuts, that's fine. You may have the time to do that. I just generally don't. And, and I don't judge people based on uh, whether they're doing strictly traditional or not. Uh, but I do believe uh, if you're going to have the term blacksmith in your business name, you, you need to have blacksmithing skills in that. And I use them all the time in my work, even though I do a blended work of forge and fabrication. shunts right there and I'm gonna go ahead because they're superficial I'm gonna go ahead and just grind them off so they're out of the way I got one on each side and that's gonna happen um, you could be super careful and not make that happen but because I had plenty of meat here I'm not worried about losing that meat normally you get cold shuts because you hammer something too thick too quick and it starts to fold over so that's what a cold shut does so I'm gonna just because these aren't deep I'm just gonna uh, take a grind take a small grinder Dress those off just a little bit to get them out of the way because they're going to go away anyway. I'm going to go ahead and take those off.
I'm drawing out the the pick. These these things are called pickaroons or hookaroons. Depends on who you get them from. And like I said at the beginning, they're used to handle firewood. This one you can buy them to handle logs. Those are a lot bigger. So what I'm doing now is I've got the cutting edge roughed in for my hatchet, and then the pick I'm forging out now. And I'm kind of planting by ear and eyesight as I go. I want a certain amount of meat out there, but I don't want it too thick because you want to cram this in the end of a piece of firewood. You really don't want it to hang up, and it's got to be tough enough to handle, which I think this steel is definitely going to be. It's pretty pretty good high carbon so far. So we're just kind of drawing, just drawing it out. We're going to continue that process here, then I'll finish it by hand. But we'll let the power hammer do the heavy work. Got a little bit of a rollover right there. You can see that. All that'll come off when I put the finish edge on it. 